Hey everybody, Dan Schindler here, still continuing with live Drum Talk TV coverage at the NAMM Show 2019. And I'm here with one of, another one of my earliest influences, Vinny Apice. How are you? I'm good. This is live? This is live. Holy mackerel. That's cool. That's cool. It's live. So my, I told you this before, but most of them don't know. One of my earliest, well, my earliest exposure to your playing is that an older cousin of mine when I was 13 or 14, so this would have been 77-ish, yeah. gave me an album, and it was Rick Derringer Live. And I'm reading the liner notes, and it says, Vinny, well, I thought it said Vinny a piece. No, no, and exactly. It's apathy. It's apathy. Yeah. Okay. And I said, hey, is this guy related to that Carmine guy? He said, it's his brother. So I've been following you since then. How old were you there, 20, 19? I was probably 19. Yeah. You know, it's funny you bring that up because uh, I just played a gig up in Sacramento with my band Last in Line. And this guy came over. He goes, I got something special for you. What is it? It's an old pass from Derringer there. He lost this for years and years and years. Someone came up to him at a gig and said, hey, is this yours? That's 44 years old. And how long was that lost? 44 years. Really? And how'd this guy find it? Like, get off the subway train? I didn't even know I lost it, but I must have lost <laughs> it. Then it was on the internet. Somebody bought it. And then this, this guy's brother bought it. And then oh, he... I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it was on the internet. It was on the internet for sale. Somebody bought it. And then this, friend, this guy's brother bought it. And he had it for years. And then he passed away. He gave it to his brother, who came to the show, and gave it, gave it to me. I'm like, holy. And God. you mentioned at this tour, you're opening for Aerosmith. That's right there. So if you could zoom in, I'd like everyone to look at that picture and give a caption for the look on Vinny's face. Like, holy bleep, I'm opening for Aerosmith. And come up with whatever creative saying you've got. Yeah. Do you remember what you were thinking like that? I mean, was it, holy crap, I'm opening for Aerosmith? Well, at that point, we never had passes. It was Derringer. We went out and did clubs for a month. Then we did the tour. So ah. like, wow, you use passes? Look how old that is. It's a clip-on pass. It's not laminate. Yeah. It's unbelievable. No wonder you lost it, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll we'll put this on my luggage. I won't yeah. tell you what's on the other side of that picture. No, you tell me after. Okay. <laughs> so, I got to ask you, who are some of your earliest influences? Uh, obviously, my brother, uh, John Bonham, Billy Cobham, Buddy Rich, Mitch Mitchell, um, uh, uh, Ian Pace, you know, and and Keith Moon is amazing, but I didn't listen to him back then. So what do those guys have in common? They all played fills in the song, and the fills became part of the songs. And you could listen to it and go, I want to learn that, Phil. There was something for drummers to learn. You know, I didn't listen to any stuff that was just straight ahead, easy, easy crap, you know. So uh, then that's the way I grew up. So when I started recording, all my recordings, I felt, you know, I, I put stuff in there that you know, interesting licks that maybe drummers would like and they would pick up on it and want to learn it. And, uh, and that's the feedback I got, you know. So... That's the way I learned, and that's a good way to keep it going, you know? What I love about that is, for those of you who know Vinny mainly from Dio and Black Sabbath, Mob Rules era, listen to the variety of influence he has. It's not all one thing. Right, right. This stuff on Mob Rules, when it stopped, brum, the Mob Rules, Ronnie sings, the Mob Rules, the brump is a rough triplet. Instead of just stopping, pop, I went, brum. And that's something Bonzo did that I heard as a kid. And I loved it, you know, and I started using that. And that's the way we share all these things. Yeah. Or steal, whatever you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Borrow. It's part of our toolbox. Yeah. So that's that's what it's all about. You know? Now, speaking of Bonzo, you just played the Bonzo Bash on Thursday. And you got a special award and something special that came with that award. Yeah, I got an award. That was funny because uh, Carmine and I were playing and then we finished, and I'm like, okay, we took a bow, and I was going to go off. And they go, no, no, wait, 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 wait. And I'm like, what's going on? I had no idea what was going on. Then they brought out this award, the Bonzo Bash Award for achievement and drumming and being around for a long time, I guess. 
I was really knocked out. I was, uh, it was really special. Brian Tishy put it together. Uh, that was really so cool. Really. That's awesome. So I hung it up in my house next to my framed. I got one of John Bonham's drumsticks. So there's the, an award and the drumstick, the drumstick. on them. Ah. So it's the Bonzo wall. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's just so awesome. One of the, and I told you this when we first met, but they don't know. And chime in if you can, if this resonates with you. One of the signature things about your playing, and I first saw this when you were playing with Black Sabbath, is when you stop a song and your drum kit kind of bounces. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, what, the, it bounces. It at the end of the song. What do you mean? There's something yeah, Where you don't just stop, everyone stops, and you go, bum, 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 bum. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's usually the endings. Yeah. Well, my theory for that is when we end a song with a band, you know, we're playing, you know, all powerful, heavy riffs and shit, and you go, now, it's like, can I say the F word? Fuck, fuck, fuck you. That's what it is. I never end on the snare. Like, bop, bop. That's the highest little yeah. sound in the kit. So to me, that's kind of like light. Low yeah. gravitational pull. Let's go. Or go. It's like, fuck. I'm done. <laughs> it's the ultimate exclamation point. Yeah. At the it's a drum exclamation point. Yeah. Yeah. What have you got going on that people can look forward to seeing you play, buying some music? Well, we're doing uh, the last in line. We just started doing shows, and that's uh, we we got a new album coming out February 22nd, oh. and that's with me and Vivian Campbell and uh, Phil Susan on bass, Andy Freeman on vocals, and we got some dates uh, this week. Every weekend, flyouts up until May, and then hey. we're even doing a show with Def Leppard. What's that? We're doing a show in England, the Download Festival, with, oh, wow. with Def Leppard. So Viv's going to play with us, then he's going to headline the whole show later on nice. with Def Leppard. Yeah, that's That'd be awesome. Cool. Then I go to Europe, I've been doing this thing called Mob Rules Live. And I got a kick-ass band there, and we play all the songs from Mob Rules, some other Sabbath stuff, a little bit of Dio thrown in. I did it last year, we did 26 shows, and it was really successful. Now they want it back. Then I took it to South America. Did good there. I did it in Ohio. Did good there. So it's another thing I'm doing. And then in between that, me and Carmine are doing some shows. So What's the biggest thing you learned from working with Ronnie? Um, there was a lot, you know. I mean, Ronnie really loved his fans. One of the first times when I joined Sabbath, you know, I was a little kid. We played the arena. We hung out and had, you know, partied somewhat. Then we left in the limo, pulled up out of the arena, and it was cold out. And there were some fans by the gate. So they opened the gate, and Ronnie said, stop the car. I'm like, what? He got out and signed everything. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. So I got out. I wasn't that known then, but signed everything with him. And then I learned how he really cared for his fans and uh, loved the music. Musically, you know, learned a lot. You know, not to repeat too many things, you know. Do the unexpected here and there, and in the songs, you know, when when you're writing them to, you know, uh, just so much stuff from Ron. Yeah. That's awesome. He's very missed. Yeah. Oh yeah. We all miss him. All the fans miss him. What he sang from his heart, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, he sang from his toes, actually. I think. <laughs> yeah. He sang from everywhere. Yeah. There was no cut and paste shit going right. back then. Last question. Yeah. The Vinny Apice fun facts question. When you're not doing music, what do you like to do? Uh, I build computers. I'm actually Microsoft certified with all the asserts and Cisco routers certified. So I started a little business on the side, and people keep calling, and I take care of them. And then I work on the house. I love everything in the house. I go to Home Depot all the time. So did Ronnie. We, we used to go to Home Depot together. You know, I do all that stuff. I love building stuff and That's cool. repairing things, building computers. I used to work on cars, but no more. Awesome. Yeah. Vinny, thank you so much for joining us. Really always appreciate you coming on. It means a lot to me. Hope you